The Ethanol Saga, Episode 1, Fermentation. Have you ever been in that really familiar situation where you're trying to ferment alcohol, but you don't know what the right concentration of sugar for your sugar wash is supposed to be? Well, look no further. In my IDS Science project, my goal is to vary the concentration of sugar in a sugar wash and determine what the ideal concentration of sugar is to ferment. And by ideal, I mean what's going to ferment at the fastest rate and yield us the highest percent yield of alcohol, um, basically after fermentation. For this, we're going to use Rogers sugar, because this stuff is just pure sucrose, which is a glucose bonded to a fructose. And the reason is, we just want pure ethanol, no other contaminants, so that way we can see how much of the sugar is actively translated into ethanol. And then later on I'm going to do a larger scale one, and then hopefully try and streamline the process, and then at the end calculate the cost and see how it stacks up to just buying isopropyl rubbing alcohol from the store. Hi there, Jeremy from the future here, just to clarify my mistake. Ethanol is not the same thing as isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Ethanol is what we put in all our alcoholic beverages. Isopropyl rubbing alcohol, on the other hand, is toxic, and if you drink it, you will die. So, ethanol is derived from fruit and grains, which is why we call it grain alcohol. Isopropanol, on the other hand, is derived from propane, which comes from fossil fuels and, you know, isn't very um, food safe. Don't drink isopropyl alcohol. It is definitely not the same thing. And the only thing we're going to derive from fermentation is ethanol. We're not getting any of this. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, let's get started. Our first step is to weigh out the sugar. I don't have a digital scale, so I had to use my grandmother's weighing scale with a physical measuring tool on the outside. It was very imprecise, and I don't recommend this if you're going for anything super scientific, but for a general proof of concept, it worked just fine. Next, we funneled the sugar into each individual Gatorade bottle. For this bottle, we used the solubility of sucrose at room temperature as our guide, which is 125 grams per 500 mils. This one is 250 grams, which is double that, and it's way too much. It didn't even dissolve in water, so I redid this one off camera with 1.5 times as much sugar. So we're going to fill up to the fill line right there. This is me filling up the two times solution. You can see how much sugar there is in there. It's a crazy amount, and it didn't even dissolve. This is our regular uh, standard solution. Here's me adding more water to the two times, and it really didn't want to dissolve, so I just dumped it out and tried again with 1.5 times. This is me redoing the two times as 1.5 times, and it certainly did dissolve a lot better. It actually, all of it dissolved, which is great. And the one on the left is actually half of the optimal, which is another test. Okay, our next step is to activate the yeast. To 50 milliliters of 40 degrees centigrade water, we add two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. Then we add a bit of sugar, we watch it double in volume over the next half an hour. And now we're going to add the yeast to all the solutions, just about topping them up. A better way of doing this would have been to add the yeast to them before and then all topping them up to the exact same volume with water afterwards. But because I did this, it messed up the dilution, so they aren't exact molarities anyways. And our final step is to put the airlocks on. Look at that. What's this? This is science. Huh? Science. Why you get why you get old? This way, they're sealed off from the air. Ooh, look at that. Hey. Thanks for tuning in to episode one of the Ethanol Saga. In our next episode, we are going to be checking the alcohol content of our fermented solutions and distilling it to get an almost pure solution of ethanol. See you in two weeks when it's done fermenting. Goodbye.